the double displacement technique that we've been talking about also lets you predict not just ionic compounds reacting, but it also lets you predict the products when you have an acid reacting with a base. And we know an acid is a chemical that starts with an H. A base is a chemical that either ends in OH or it's going to form OH minus when it goes into solution. And we're going to see these in a lot more detail later on. That we have an entire chapter around acids and bases. Just so that you're aware, you can also be given a problem like this, where it's not an ionic compound because you have HCl, and H in the front tells you that this is an acid, which is a form as a molecular compound. But the double displacement technique still works. We take the positive part, which is the H+, and we pair it up with the negative part, and in the chemical like this, KHCO3, you need to be able to recognize that's the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate anion. And then we do the positive potassium paired up with the negative chloride. We still do our crisscross, so we're going to take H plus and pair that up with the anion HCO3 minus. One to one ratio when we do our crisscross, so we get H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. The other product between the potassium and the chloride, we do our crisscross and we get potassium chloride. Now it turns out carbonic acid is not stable in water it's going to break down. It doesn't dissociate into cations and anions, but it breaks down because it forms a gas. Carbonic acid turns into water and carbon dioxide. And we know carbon dioxide is a gas, water is a liquid. Carbonic acid, does that dissolve in water? Yes, because it starts with an H. And it's not going to be on the table of ionic compounds, but we know that that is aqueous. It turns out there are three chemicals that form gas. So number one is carbonic acid. Number two is sulfurous acid, H2SO3. So when you have sulfurous acid being formed, it will also break down and it makes the same first product, H2O, water, and the other product is sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. The third that you need to remember is ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH, which breaks down into water and ammonia, NH3 gas. So these aren't, aren't that bad. If you can remember these three chemicals what they all have in common is one product is always H2O liquid, and then the other product you can remember, well you don't even have to remember, if you subtract off two hydrogens and an oxygen, for example, from H2CO3, you'll be left with CO2. If you do the same thing for H2SO3, Subtract away one hydrogen and two oxygens, two hydrogen rather than one oxygen, you'll be left with just SO2. And the same thing for the ammonium hydroxide. You want to keep this in mind when you are balancing 
chemical reactions because here is a classic example. We have a very similar reaction, an acid reacting with a base, and we get two products, but the two products, one of them breaks down. So this one is forming H2O and sulfur dioxide. So we know that that is one of the three gas forming products and it came from H2SO3, sulfurous acid. So when balancing a question like this one, what I would recommend you do is recognize H2O and SO2 had to come from H2SO3. And we can balance this reaction writing this product and the other product, potassium bromide. Now that makes it much easier to balance. Because when I write it like this, I recognize the sulfite anion and I have one of those on both sides. I have one hydrogen, I have two hydrogen on this side, so I can make this coefficient a two. That's going to throw off my bromine, so I need two bromine on the product side, and that two balances the two in the potassium. Also, one sulfate, one sulfate. So when I rewrite the original reaction, my coefficients are two, one, H2SO3, I have one of these, so that means I have one water and one sulfur dioxide, and then two potassium bromides.